now present For the Record with Neil Heinen. The view of Madison from the Lucier Community Education Center is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. Among Madison's greatest assets are its neighborhood centers. These are the places where communities have their roots. They are gathering places, health and wellness providers, resource access points, learning and training centers, and more. Strong cities have strong community centers. Because they are so deeply connected, community centers are also places where city issues play out in real time. Housing, transportation, employment, education. Real issues for real people in real places. Lucier Community Education Center on Madison's west side is one of the best, as it's, is its executive director, Paul Terranova, and he joins me this morning on For the Record. 20 years, Paul. Getting right? there. And yep, you're just yep. celebrating your 20th anniversary of this? I'll, um, I'll be celebrating in June. Okay. Yep. Is it 20? Yep. Year 2000. Yep, that was uh, yep, my first first day. I love that perspective. I mean, you've seen a lot of change, mm -hmm. um, both in the city and in our relationship to neighborhood centers and mm -hmm. community centers. We talk about them a lot. Some get more attention than others, yeah. but I think if you live in a neighborhood, you know your community center, you know your neighborhood center. For those people that just, you know, don't appreciate all of what a neighborhood center does, mm -hmm. just kind of big picture, Paul, talk sure. about that. Um, I mean, Madison is really fortunate. We have a very strong network of community centers, all independent nonprofit organizations that are rooted in their own neighborhood, in their own community. Um, they range in size from a you know, the 1,200 square foot Teresa Terrace Center that the Wisconsin Youth Company runs to um, the larger centers like the Boys and Girls Club and obviously the Goodman Center, which is probably the best known. Um, and, you know, it, it really, there will be some things that are common in probably every community center you walk in. If you go in after school or during the summer, you're going to see a lot of kids doing a lot of different things. Um, long gone are the days of youth programming that's just keep kids off the street. Right. You know, we're talking about engaged programming, getting kids into STEM, getting kids into the arts, getting kids outdoors, lots of really um, engaging work. Um, you'll also see food programs, employment programs, <coughs> programs for seniors. Um, the way that I like to think about it, the way we talk about the Lucier Center is um, we're not a social service agency. Um, we're a vehicle for the community to take care of itself. Um, a lot of things happen at the center, and sometimes people will say, well, wow, the center does a lot for the community, and, um, and we tend to flip that around and say that the community does a lot for the community through the center. It's been, I don't know, two or three years ago since you wrote a piece that I, I really had a big impact on me. Okay. On the, on the five myths and one truth about nonprofits. I'm going to have to pull that one back up. Well, you know, you were reflecting on, on I think, this, this common kind of dialogue about nonprofits should work more like a business. Mm -hmm. Why don't you collaborate more mm -hmm. oh, together? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th you know, things that I think people don't, it, it, you know, the, it, it displays a lack of understanding, I think, mm -hmm. of what community mm -hmm. centers are. Sure. But, but in terms of the overall, you know, role of community mm -hmm. centers, mm -hmm. do we still have those myths? I mean, they, they exist. I think that, um, you know, each one of those myths could probably be a show. But I think, um, I mean, when I think about both the Lucia Center and the other community centers that that, um, that we work with, and, and we work pretty closely across that, that network of, yeah. of 15 or so. Um, there's very, very rarely anything that we do alone. You know, I mean, if you go into, if you go into our elementary after school program, um, in a given semester, I think this semester there are 20 organizations involved in help working with us with the kids from you know, Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra to the Arboretum to, you know, um, folks from the UW, volunteers through the Badge of Athletics. I just, you know, whole, you know, 20 organizations and I think 80, 90 volunteers. And that's just the elementary program. We certainly wouldn't run a food pantry by ourselves. And, you know, everything we do is collaborative. Some of it is collaborative with other neighborhood centers. So we run a training program for folks who want to get qualified to work in after school programs with the Goodman Center and um, Kennedy Heights. Um, but others are with other kinds of organizations. And we're trying to provide, you know, we're providing the space and the vehicle for <coughs> Newbridge to do a senior meal program or for the Literacy Network to do one on one English language tutoring. Mm -hmm. um, all of those kinds, that, that role of being that vehicle, that place for people to share their gifts with the community is really what we, um, 
what brings us together. And, um, and it, what's, it's also what kind of ends up kind of bringing out things that you might not have expected. So um, each center has its own uniqueness. Uh, at the Lucia Center, we've, uh, over the last few years, we've created uh, a low power radio station, so 95.5 FM, which wasn't on anyone's strategic priorities list, <laughs> right? But it was an opportunity that came up. And I think if you thought of a community center as a social service agency, you'd be like, radio station? What does that have to do with anything? But if you think about it as a vehicle for people to share their gifts, uh, a place for the whole diversity of the community to come together and share what they have to offer, then it suddenly makes sense. What's on that radio station, just out of curiosity? I was, I was driving over, um, and I was listening to La Sabrosa, which oh, okay. is a, um, they have a show. They also have an online radio station, so that was Spanish language. Um, we've had some folks on there. I remember turning it on, and there was someone who really liked Sinatra. There was a, there was a different <laughs> amount of Sinatra. Um, one of our staff is actually one of our administrative assistant, Cliff, who, um, who just turned 70 this year. Happy birthday, Cliff. Um, he... Um, He's been collecting jazz for 35 or 40 years, so he's got his jazz show. Um, we've had, uh, we also have our Corey Whitmore who runs that station. Uh, he's our, our radio station manager. He goes out to um, the middle school and the high school after school programs. He's gone to Meadowood and Middleton Youth Center and, uh, and other Elver Park and done radio clubs with young people and they'll produce a show and that'll go on the, on the station as well. So right. lots, of lots of different things going on. Um, <clears throat> I tell you what, why don't we take a break? You're, you're in a really unique location, and I think the relationship to the other places in the neighborhood is, mm -hmm. is interesting. We're going to talk about that with Paul Terranova from the Lucier Community Education Center right after this. For the Record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. at Nissan's year-end event, like Altima, with available intelligent all-wheel drive. Get 0% financing for 60 months on road. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful, you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, returning to Overture Center for the Arts, February 4th and 5th. Tickets at ShenYun.com slash WI. You wouldn't frame half a photo. Then why settle for using only half of your insurance benefits? Get the full picture of your health coverage with the iCare Medicare plan. With iCare, you know exactly what benefits you have and exactly how to use them. Plus, as a member, you get even more benefits like over-the-counter items at zero added cost and zero dollar premium. So what are you waiting for? Call now to learn about these great benefits and more only with the iCare Medicare plan. Steinoffels is your mattress headquarters with the largest selection of name brand mattresses, and they're all on sale. Get a Beautyrest Queen mattress starting at only $3.99. Upgrade to a Beautyrest Black mattress and get $200 in Steinhoffel's cash and free next day delivery. Queen Beautyrest Black mattress with an adjustable power foundation for only $45 a month. With the largest selection, low price guarantee, and free next day delivery, Steinhoffel's is your number one trusted mattress retailer. Nissan's year-end event, like Altima, with available intelligent all-wheel drive. Get 500 holiday bonus cash on select models. My guest on For the Record this morning is Paul Terranova. For 20 years now, the executive director of the Lucier Community Education Center on Madison's west side. And, well, it's on Gammon Road, and it's right next to Jefferson Middle and Memorial High School. Yep. Just kind of kitty corner from... West Town. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a whole new development there mm -hmm. uh, that used to be Madison College, and mm -hmm. I, I still don't know that I, I know exactly what the end game is for that sure. for that whole thing. But it's a it's a it's an interesting geographic location. Mm -hmm. And how how does that play into the kind of work that you do there? Um, well, it plays in a few. I mean, it's it's 
critical. I think I think any community center where you're located is absolutely critical. I mean, I neglected um, the important part, which is right across the, the street, street is yeah. is a major neighborhood on the yeah. west side. Yep, Wexford Ridge, Wexford Apartments is um, that's our history, that's our base. That's uh, it was a group of women from the Wexford Apartments that started the Wexford Ridge Neighborhood Center in 1979. Um, we're just celebrating 40 years as a community center, and this group of women ran it uh, themselves. Uh, different groups and con configurations of women did that over probably 14 or 15 years before there was any staff. And that, um, and when we went to build a full, actually, my first day in June on June 16th, 2000, year, the year 2000, Dolores Tomaszewska, who was one of those original women who helped to start the center, gave me a tour. She was the vice president of the board at the time, and we got to the end of the tour of those two two-bedroom apartments, and she said, this isn't the center. The center's the place you're going to get built. <laughs> so that's, you know... Well, welcome, welcome to work, Paul. Welcome to work, yeah, yeah. My first executive director job anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so that that is, you know, when we talked about building, we knew we had to be close to that base. Um, and when we started looking at creating a center, we obviously said we had these amazing relationships with the schools. Um, we run middle school programming with MSCR and the Urban League at Jefferson Middle School. Um, now we have an amazing employment program with the special education department at um, Memorial High School. So, you know, these, these relationships are absolutely critical. And you mentioned we have... Um, our new neighbors at the Tree Lane Family Apartments, which has been an amazing uh, addition to the neighborhood, and we're we're so grateful to have folks there who are becoming part of our programs and part of our community, and um, and we we've, we've been really excited to have them. Have there them was here. a there was a, um, a a pretty important conversation uh, for a while about Tree Lane yeah. and, and what was going on there, and I mean you wrote some things, Paul, that to me I thought just suggested that here's an opportunity mm -hmm. to look at how we think about housing and how sure. we. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, you probably don't, we're not just going to declare it a success right now, but it seems like it's mm -hmm. worked out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, the thing that, that I couldn't let go of is the fact that you, in a matter of three days, you took 43, 45 families with 100 children who were in the most vulnerable and most crisis situations on the street, in shelter, and put them into permanent housing. And I recognize that there were bumps along the way and there were people and there were there were both very real bumps and there were also perceived right. bumps and there were very real fears on the part of people and I, I never want to minimize people's fears. Um, and I also know, um, you know, I've, I've sat in the center with one of our staff and a high schooler who, you know, we're closing the center and she's saying I, I, I can't leave yet I'm still waiting to hear from my mom about where we're gonna sleep tonight and I think about the kinds of things where I had one of my staff come up and say you know miss so-and-so I think they they lost their housing I haven't talked to her yet but she has two kids in our program and one of them is raging and the other one's curled up on the couch crying and that that's what's happened over the last couple of months when they've been shifting from place to place so those the fears that children and families are going through when they're in that really that really vulnerable place of homelessness doesn't necessarily always get weighed in the same way as those of us who are in more comfortable situations. And yeah, we have some fears. Maybe some of them are fo founded, some of them aren't. Um, so for me, that weight, you know, was it was always, yeah, I guess the thing that I always say is, yes, there are things that make me uncomfortable, but, and there are things that, that I may be afraid of, um, but when it's about children and families well-being that's the time that we need to be brave right and that being brave is being afraid and still doing the right thing I mentioned that <clears throat> issues like housing and transportation and, and disparities all of the things that that I think we've become certainly more fluent in mm -hmm. in Madison in general mm -hmm. um, but community centers are like right at ground zero for where these things are, are, are happening mm -hmm. and your perspective on yeah how we wrestle with housing and transportation you know, there, there are a couple ways to come at that, and I think there are a lot of people who could answer that question better than me from the kind of a policy wonk kind of perspective. Um, but what I see on a daily basis is, um, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about the fact that I think that the, um, the biggest provider of housing services in, uh, in Madison for low income for poor people is poor people, the biggest provider of childcare 
sub, you know, affordable child care for poor people is poor people. The biggest provider of uh, transportation assistance is poor people, right? It's folks helping each other. And, um, and that kind of gets erased. And, and folks do it, you know, I, folks I know do that at their own peril. Like, they actually take major risks. Um, I was talking to a woman recently, you know, who took uh, a mom and her five kids into her two-bedroom apartment. Um, you know, and this was a, the, the person that she took in was in a really rough spot, and it wasn't necessarily easy, but she said, I'm not, I'm not watching those babies be homeless. Um, and she was risking her own housing. It would have been a, a lease violation that, that could have put her out. But that, that kind of, um, I mean, I would call it heroism, that kind of work that gets done on a daily basis by people um, is, is, really, is really under, and I think uh, undervalued, and under supported. Well, that was my question. Does that suggest that, that we would be wise to help support those providers of housing think, yeah. and transportation or work with them on other uh, you know, alternatives here? I think that, um, I mean, the folks at the city and the folks at United Way are so tired of hearing me say this, but there's a, you know, we talk, at the center we talk a lot about what do we do to help people navigate an unjust world and what do we do to make it more just. And a lot of our resources go into helping people navigate an unjust world. And that's good. You know, we can't turn around and say to people like, hey, we'll, we'll give you food when the revolution comes. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. Of course, we have to do that. But when you only do that, if all you do for um, the racial disparity gap is tutor kids, then you're telling them that the kids are the problem and the kids aren't the problem, right? And when all you do for homeless people or for hungry people is provide them food, you're still, you're making, the, there's, a, there's a, a, um, an implication that we're making there. And so I definitely think that um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of solutions in supporting folks who are most affected to build the power to then solve problems in their own communities yeah. and you know that's my background in community organizing speaking and um, and I will you know I'll stick with that till the day I die we're gonna talk about how people can help support the work of Lucia and community centers with Paul Terranova when we come back on for the record right after this Get new floors with Empire Today's $99 sale. Buy one room, get carpet, hardwood, or laminate in all other rooms for only $99. So buy one room and get carpet, plus laminate, and even hardwood in as many of the rooms as you want. All for $99. That's new floors for the whole house. Buy one room, get floors in all other rooms for only $99. Don't miss Empire's $99 sale. 800 empire Today. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get Internet from another company, and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it? I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and Internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. Burning the candle at both ends this holiday season? Well, if it's Z's you need, the holiday sale at Denver Mattress has you covered. Right now, get a $300 Furniture Row gift certificate with select Denver Pedic mattress sets. Or check out the budget-friendly Summit Queen, only $189.99. Plus, save up to 70% on seasonal closeouts and clearance items. And finance your mattress starting as low as $9 a month with five years no interest. The holiday sale on now at Denver Mattress. If you're planning a last-minute trip to follow the Badgers to the Rose Bowl, we have what you need to know before you buy tickets. And we'll tell you how to pick the right pillow to make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. We'll see you bright and early Monday.
My guest is Paul Terranova, the executive director of the Lucier Community Education Center on Madison's west side. I was thinking about this, Paul, the, the news this week that Madison uh, is like the number two metro area in the country for tech job potential growth. Mm -hmm. And so this whole, um, uh, you know, economic development conversation, mm -hmm. Madison is booming. I mean, to some degree, this is the tale of two Madisons. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is doing very well in that area, and I think for a lot of people, the conversation around new economy tech growth was that it would be inclusive mm -hmm. by demand, that mm -hmm. the young people who were mainly the, the, the machine for this were going to insist on inclusion. My question is, what is the discussion like at Lucia about these jobs being the future, about young people at Lucia? Mm -hmm. being prepared, seeing an opportunity, seeing a window to some of these jobs, if it is indeed the potential here in this in this city. Sure. I mean, I think, um, I don't know how much we're... Uh, I mean, you talk about STEM. We're you know, talking, yeah, we're talking about... A lot of what we're talking about is, um, with young people, is thinking of how do we create the kind of environments that elicit people's intrinsic motivation to learn. and. Young people, and there's there are decades of research about the kind of the conditions. It's not about motivating young people to learn. It's not about um, you know just you know pouring knowledge into them. It's about creating that environment where people feel respected and, and welcomed, and where there's a, a sense of choice and relevance in what they're learning. That there's a um, there's a sense of challenge and meaningfulness of what they're learning, and then they can see themselves grow. And there's decades of research showing that that's what brings out everyone's intrinsic motivation to learn and so you go to any group of kids the group of kids that some people label as unmotivated to learn they may be unmotivated to learn what we want them to learn in the con in the situation in the context that we have said is the one that they should learn in and the way that they should learn mm -hmm. but they're absolutely motivated to learn and so how do we create those contexts and that's part of what we try to do with our programming giving kids lots of opportunities to try lots of things whether it's again learning violin from someone from the wisconsin chamber orchestra or going out hiking or you know ropes course or going to <coughs> dc and meeting with a legislator you know all of those kinds of things um, to figure out where's that hook that gets a kid who's like oh I, oh you know what i want to actually get into that recording studio mm -hmm. Paul, I, uh, my assumption is that each individual neighborhood center, community center um, looks at resources differently. You know, they yeah. have their own unique mix of mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. But in terms of sustainability for mm -hmm. Lucia, who are some of your key partners? And, yeah. and, and what are some entry points for people who want to get involved? Sure. So, I mean, we have, uh, we have the list of, of partners, of individuals and organizations is huge. Yep. Um, you know, our, our biggest single funder is the city of Madison, and it's about 20% of our budget. So you start to see that, that there's a lot there. We have a close partnership with Kena Mutual Group, which is right around the corner from us. Yep. Um, there are lots of ways to support, and I, I encourage people to support the community center in your neighborhood. And um, if someone's interested in being involved at the Lucia Center, um, you know, yes, we definitely accept donations um, on our website. There's, you can give, um, and that, that is really important. We, um, you know, we raise over $500,000 a year just to get through and do the things that we're doing. Um, and, you know, there's also lots of ways to be involved. We had over 400 volunteers who did 10,000 hours of volunteer work last year. Um, and so when there are folks who, you know, we say that everyone who walks through our door has uh, gifts to share and everyone has needs to be met. And um, for those for whom one of the needs to be met is a place to share their gifts, We'd love to. We'd love to meet you. There's so many great programs that we just. I mean, we're, we we just don't have time to go to, to do all of them. But the, the whole concept of, of after school time mm -hmm. and, and most, which yeah, Lucia was a partner in yeah. starting Madison after school time, um, has gotten increasingly important. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's just one area I think where mm -hmm. people are looking for a place yeah. to help. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think I think when people think of community centers, they tend to think of the after school programs, the out of school time, summer camp programs, as well as food pantries and job programs. You know, we also have a radio station and a yeah. neighborhood organizing institute. Yeah. Um, but there are ways, you know, you can in terms of one of the ways that feels very tangible to folks is to say, well, okay, what does it take 
to support one child to be in this kind of enriching after school space for a year or for a month or for a week? Uh, what does it take to support a kid to, um, to go to summer camp? And, and so those are ways that, that can really, um, someone can make some, you know, make a donation that feels relevant and really specific. Well, there's, uh, you know, we, we're, we're living in some pretty difficult times right now. Yeah. I mean, we keep talking about, about the divide, and it's a challenge to talk mm -hmm. about Madison as a place of opportunity, as a place that has, uh, that mm -hmm. we can maybe get our hands around mm -hmm. issues and yet still uh, deal with the fact that we've got some pretty big issues to deal with. Just kind of wrap things up for us from your perspective looking forward to your next 20 years. Well, I'm sure. yeah, I would, um, I guess I would say that, uh, my hope is always in the the power of people working together. I'm an organizer, and for me, organizing means putting people in relationship together so they can do more together than they could by themselves. Um, that's that's the art of community building. That's the art of building power, and that's where the solutions lie. In fact, there are no there's no fail there is no lack of solutions. There's just there's just a lack of power to put them in place, and we start to weave those communities together when we get involved and we spend our time together, um, and we start to live as citizens. And so I feel like community centers are a place where we move from resident, someone who just lives next to other people, to a community member, people who actually begin to take care of each other, to citizens, people who stand up for each other in our public lives, and um, yeah. That's what we're trying to do. That it is indeed the community that determines what Lucia is yeah. and what it does. Yep. All right. Come on back here, and we'll talk about the Neighborhood Organizing Institute. That would be great. Uh, but thanks for coming on, Paul. Thank you. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. MG&E, building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy. Driven by innovation. Fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com For two decades, News 3 Now and Channel 3000 have paid tribute to top-notch teachers nominated by our viewers. Every month, we spotlight and salute an area teacher, and we want to hear about your favorite. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Top-notch teachers, sponsored by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Do you take daily prescription pain medications, but they don't help enough? Do you want more options to better manage chronic pain? University of Wisconsin-Madison Stamp Study offers free, safe, therapeutic programs to address chronic pain. The programs occur once a week for eight weeks and pays up to $340. Call 608-212-6902 today. Again, that's 608-212-6902. Hey guys, good morning. It's gonna be another great day working at Steinhoffel's. Oh, yeah. Does he work here? No, he's pretending so he can get the employee discount. Oh, but during the employee family price sale, everyone gets the same discount we do. I love this sale! He doesn't have to pretend that he works here. Yeah, I know, but he's already been named employee of the month. It's Steinhoffel's employee family price sale, where you pay what we pay. Save 40% on the largest selection of quality furniture. He's got hustle. Yes, he does. MG&E, building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together, committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com. Our thanks to Paul Terranova and to you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.